Wheel of Time season two, the action's amazing. Uh, episode two is especially like I don't want to give it away, but wow, like it's 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 grand, it's epic. I was wondering, could you talk about kind of like your process for designing and setting up a choreography and the action sequence of like that scale? Yeah, it's a long process because every character is moving, you know, different way. They get different weapons, they get different styles, and also as a person, they they have different movements that they prefer and stuff. So obviously, like a lot of them come from season one, so it helps us because we already know, you know, what's what's good for each character and what they've done, you know, prior to season two. But we start early, you know, it takes about eight weeks to prepare a battle like that. And then, of course, like it may not show us much, but there is a lot of rigging involved for when we have Loyal doing his big throws and stuff. So we need to make sure that we get all the machines in place and, and make soft set pieces for the cast to fall on and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so when we start designing the action, we speak with Ray, the showrunner, and with the director. Thomas and, and see what direction they want to go, how long the fights they would like to be, and each character, how important in the scene is their fight, particularly. And then we start, you know, working with the standables and, and show them some, you know, first moves and stuff. And if they like it, we start building on top of that. And then once they're happy with, you know, the motion and then the choreographies, we bring the cast and then start teaching them their moves. And then, of course, asking them how they like the moves or if they would prefer some you know bits and pieces to be changed so it suits more their body you know like and and then their comfort kind of moves or if they have something that makes them feel a little bit like looking better and stuff you know from the experience so so it's it's kind of a long process but then we of course take everything to the set and then start adjusting because the set is not as perfect as the as the gym floor so so it's it takes yeah as I say, it's about eight weeks to the final kind of, you know, established choreography that we're ready to shoot. Eight eight weeks for, uh, for for minutes. That's that's a huge investment, but it's it yeah. like it's such a impactful like. I mean, you know, there's a story aspect of it too, but just like seeing it, you know, witnessing it is just very impactful, and that's it's kind of crazy to think how much goes into it, and it's it's awesome yeah. though. It's just it's so cool. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you. For that. The series, is like, like you know, there's a lot of traditional combat, a lot of medieval combat, but there's also the magical elements. Um, and so, how do you, uh, how does your approach to choreography work with, you know, incorporating like what you know, like something that's you can't see, that's not even there yet, but you kind of have to like just kind of imagine it. Like, how do, how does it work with doing stuff like that? Well, a lot of it we get, you know, from the script and. From again, Rave and the director talking, say, okay, we're gonna do use one power that's gonna send them, for example, to the wall. They're gonna go flying, you know, they hit the ground, they slide or something. So we kind of know what the effect is supposed to be. And then we need to find out what the person doing the channeling is supposed to do. And for that, we we've got a you know special person, Scarlett, who does all the movement coaching and she comes up with with the way the acid is supposed to move and she teaches them. So once we have the action kind of roughly done and prepared and you know ready to to like you know finalize it, we bring her in and she works with the actors and also with the standard boss because they need to be able to replicate exactly what the actor does. And she teaches them how they're supposed to move before the action happens, how they move after and all that stuff. So it's a collaboration between you know all these teams and and then these amazing people. It's oh wow, even that's okay. That's okay. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. I I feel like you're one of the best people to kind of have the answer for this question. What like how do you? What's the secret to selling the stunt to make it seem real? Like that's like oh like what's the secret to making it feel like oh there's a lot of pain there's a lot of impact like is there like a trick or is like a certain is it the movement is it the emotion is it the sound like what is it that like it's like people wouldn't people get to sus suspend complete disbelief i think a lot of it is also it's not only the sound because sometimes you make it kind of real but you just you know you put it up so you save you kind of take the edge off 
you know, the impact and stuff, but it's it's so much about the director and the way he films things. So it's again when we create action and he's and the get director sees it, then we talk about what would be maybe the best way to film it or of the idea what he has and and then we kind of adjust the action to make you know the best effect for the angle that they choose. So it's again, you know, it's it's working together with with the creative team and and finding out what's the best thing, you know, for for the action and for the scene. Okay, so it's very dependent on the situation. So yeah. There's no like one trick for all. Okay, okay. And of course, it's all together. Like as you say, sound and the special effects, and if you get some blood, you know, come there. So it's it, you know as much realism you can add that it happened for real. If it's part of the scene, then of course, then it convinces the audience that it, it actually is real. Okay. What's your favorite um like trick to make something that's like it it's uh I I, I PA'd on a set and it there was like laying down on your chest allows you to like contort your angle to make it look like it goes like a full one eighty. Do you have a particular like stunt trick that to make something look really brutal but actually is like no pain at all? Oh, I think for that we kind of ask the the makeup effects and stuff to create like artificial limbs and stuff and. Sometimes you you dig a hole and you you bury the real limb you know under the actor and then you put the fake one on top and and you make it look really bad you know like you see the bones and stuff broken out so yeah I think that is not much trick sometimes we we bring contortionists to make you know, little special walls that they look like there's uh, dislocated some part of the body but at the end of the day I think it's still better to use to make up effects and, and actually you know not that have to work around it but actually mm -hmm. see it and and you know like and and be within the scene without you know. I'm a huge fan of stunt work and I but it's like I don't know like the lingo about it. Like you know I just I know it, I like it. Uh but um as as like an interviewer, what is something that like you wanna talk about about your work that a lot of us aren't asking? I think it's it's not. I really talk about like a, a lot of other stuff. It's more like about the preparation and about like you know if you're gonna do stunt, how hard it's supposed to work. And then and I don't always say it's not about how good of a stuntman you are, but it's more how how you contribute to the whole team because you need to watch each watch each other's back. And then you know it's a lot of things that people don't see. It's like you've got the stunt person coming to the set and with this great fall, but then you see there's another 10 people actually, you know, bringing the, the airbag down and then, or building a cardboard box that's falling. So there's a lot of people that are actually part of that big stunt that they never get the appreciation from the audience. So, you know, I would always want people to say, it's not only about the, the you know, glorious big stunts, but it's about everybody else in the team. And, and so, you know, when people ask, I say, yeah, it's not only me, even if I do big stunt or I used to do big stunt, it was always about all the other guys helping to make it, you know, safe and, and make it good. My my last question for you, you've portrayed a lot of superpowers, uh, you know, doubling for, you know, different people and stuff like that. What's been your favorite, like, hero or super ability to perform? You mean perform? when I did stunts myself or? Yeah, when you did stunts yourself. Well, I think, you know, all the kind of Avengers bits and pieces like Captain America and, and Guardians of the Galaxy. I enjoy all of that because a lot of people still kind of, even though they get the powers, they're still like human and they fall down and they get hurt kind of the same way. So I like that because it was still kind of the real stunt that you could do. Didn't have to be digital doubles for a lot of it. So I enjoy that because then you can actually show your skills and and okay. I, I feel a little bit for that moment that I am the superhero. So. Compared to most people, you are. Like, like no, one, I, no one does that stuff normally. But okay, yeah, that's my time. Thank you so much for your time. I can't wait Thank to you. everyone see your team, you and your team's work on Wheel of Time. Season.